Today we're going to be going over uh, battery build and how to build your own DIY uh, 280 amp hour 48 volt battery. I am going to be using the Apexium kit that I got from Jenny Wu at Dukon Power. Um, I've actually bought all of my batteries from Jenny over the last couple of years. I have not had any problems with the batteries that I've received from them. They've all arrived in excellent condition. The packaging is excellent. Uh, none of the batteries were scratched up, dented, bloated, uh, any of the problems that you might normally see that come along with uh, buying raw cells. I have not had any of those problems. So we're going to go through and unpack these batteries and uh, we're going to check them out. And once we've got them checked out, we're going to begin assembling our battery. We're going to get started here by unboxing this battery box um, and unpacking this thing and checking out the battery case. Now that we've inspected all the battery cells, we know that they're in good shape. We're going to uh, unpack this case and just make sure we have all of the raw components that we need. Um, the packaging has come quite a long ways in, in uh, items that have been shipped from overseas and the Apexium battery kit is a very good example of how far along they've come. When I opened this box up, I noticed uh, they were packaged very well. Everything inside was packaged very well. Nothing was in there shaking around. And I actually have a couple other styles of these DIY cases. I have bought two cases from Seplos and I bought two cases from EEL, both of which um, did not come packed nearly as nicely as the Apexium kit. Uh, stuff was just kind of strewn about in the bottom of the case and um, things were kind of rattling around and you can imagine that this thing's rattling over the all the way over the sea to you know to America um, and that's that's a big deal so Apexium seems to have done a much better job packaging things up and um, making sure that what you purchase uh, arrives to you not broken and I, I feel like that's very important so as you're unpacking the box you'll notice that there are um, there are four bags inside of here and inside of those bags it's essentially broken up into individual stages and each stage kind of has its own bag everything's packed together that goes in that stage first you're going to put on uh, uh, epoxy board and then the um, the compression the foam compression chunks and then you're going to assemble the front face and then you're going to assemble the top boards um, the balance boards and then um, you put the BMS in and through this whole process everything's kind of already sorted out for you you don't really have to think too much the steps in getting this case open and getting everything prepared are honestly pretty simple you just remove the shipping screws all those silver shipping screws um, you unpack the box you take the top um, uh, balance read balance lead holders off and then uh, simply unpack the box the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and inspect each individual one of our cells um, the we'll start with with looking at the pressure relief valve on the top and just make sure that none of the pressure re relief valves on any of the cells are busted open if they are busted open you need to return that battery and get a replacement for it um, and then we're going to go through and look at the sides, all four sides, and inspect every single battery thoroughly to ensure that there's no swelling, there's no dents, there's no chips, there's no problems with any of these battery cells because these things are going to be in a case for 20 years. And if you really kind of think about, okay, this thing has to withstand 20 years of being inside of the steel case while they're not really meant to be mobile um, you do want to make sure that you start out with high quality raw components that you don't want to have any problems with any of these cells and if anything at all looks out of order just get a replacement um, uh, the Dukon power people are very good about taking care of their customers and that's one of the number one reasons I continue to use them just as a side note, I'm not sponsored by anybody. This is all built, bought with my own dime, um, and I built all these batteries myself. I did the research. I looked at the available options out there, and can you get cheaper sales somewhere else? Probably. Uh, but the after-sales support is such a big thing that if you do have a problem, you want to know that if you spent you know $15,000 that somebody's going to be there to help you out. 
the next step here is to go ahead and uh, pull this front plate out and then start putting the epoxy boards in. And you'll notice that a couple of the epoxy boards are taller than the others and there's more of them. So those are the ones that go up on the sides and then the skinnier epoxy boards go in the bottom and then the small ones go in the front and the back. Um, both of my cameras overheated during shooting this video. So I missed uh, putting in the first battery, but if you look in the manual and you, didn't, you do need to reference the manual um, to make sure that you've got these or, or oriented correctly that the orientation of the batteries is correct because you want your main positive and your main negative to land in the centers uh, all the way down to the end towards the BMS. So um, you do get to see me uh, loading in some of the batteries here. But um, so, yeah, you, you first you want to set these batteries in and then you want to fasten that front plate on. Um, as you're putting the batteries together, you want to make sure that you get the foam pads on the right side. Those are what provide the compression. Those are what uh, make sure the batteries are not in there wiggling around and then also can't swell. Once you've got all the batteries in place, you can go ahead and uh, cinch down this front cover. And I like to use a star pattern um, when putting these nuts in or these bolts in. Um, and I want to make sure that as I'm tightening the front cover down that I don't over torque things. It's, you don't have to go gorilla strength on it. You just need to get them uh, tight. That's all. After you've got your front cover cinched down, you can go ahead and start building out the front plate. That's what I like to do next whenever I'm building these battery cases is I'll go ahead and get my um, front cover assembled and the BMS, the fuse, um, all the flexible bus bars, um, your screen, your, dis your display, um, all that stuff goes and gets mounted on the front cover. It's really not that hard to assemble. Um, you pretty much can't put something in the wrong place because the screws won't line up. So as you're going through, I just like to unpack and get everything sorted out. So that way, when I go to build the battery front cover, um, I could just pick the components up that I need, put them on, and get them, uh, get them set up. Um, just a note, whenever you're putting these printed circuit boards uh, onto a piece of metal, I like to just get the, all the, the screws started. Um, I don't actually tighten them down until they are uh, all of them are already in. And then, again, you don't need to go gorilla strength with these things. It is a printed circuit board. So uh, just tighten it down and use, use your best judgment, but you don't need to go crazy when tightening all these components down. Um, one note about the fuse holder. The fuse holder, you do have to trim a little bit, which you'll see in the video that I do trim the uh, the fuse holder a little bit so the it will fit over top of the flexible bus bars. I don't know that you really need to do that. I don't know that you really need to even have that cover on there. But um, if you want to put the cover on there, you just need to trim it up a little bit, and then it will fit just fine. So after you get your front cover built, um, you're going to move on to adding in your bus bars and uh, the bus bars are very simple to put on. It's very simple to put this whole case together, honestly. I mean, if you just read through the manual quickly, you will get the gist of it. And the Apexian manual, I do have to say, is very thorough. It goes through every part and every piece of everything you need to do to put these batteries together. Uh, it has pictograms for everything and uh, and clear language. So if you have not read the manual before you start, you, you might want to give that a shot first. So now that we got most of the components on, um, we're going to go ahead and put the terminal blocks in. Um, these terminal blocks, they use a special connector from Apexium uh, that connects onto the cables. And after we get those terminal blocks in, we can go ahead and flip this thing over and put all of our flexible bus bars on. And these flexible bus bars can only really go one way. They can't go multiple ways. So um, as you're putting them in, I mean, I would just encourage you to, again, read the manual. Um, you don't have to use Gorilla Strength on these screws either. As I've said before, you just need to get them tightened down and, and torqued down to the manual specification. And <clears throat> these like I said, these bus bars, they really can only go on one way. There's not uh, a way for you to mix this up or get confused here. Okay, in this next section here, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, balance leads and the balance circuit boards assembled. 
and they just go on the rails that attach from the front of the battery to the back of the battery. And to assemble these, um, you want to use the same stuff you've kind of been using this whole time, where you're not going to go crazy with tightening down the screws. You put the, all of the screws in first and then tighten the assemblage together. Um, you want to you wanna first put the backer that goes on the very back side of, the, uh, of these bars because it's easier to do that first. And what I like to do is start at one side, um, stick it down, stretch out the edge to the other side, and then smooth the whole thing over. And that makes the process quite a lot simpler. And I really appreciate the way that Apexium packaged all this stuff together because they essentially packaged it together in, in the steps that you need to go in where, you know, I, I do like to get the front case assembled first and then uh, move back to the battery and, and get that fully assembled. So you can see me pulling out the bus bars and, and the screws to fully assemble the uh, top side of the battery. But we'll go ahead and get these printed circuit boards attached to these bars. Um, one thing to know is when you are putting these together, uh, if you drop a screw in the back, make sure you have a magnet available. Um, and when I was assembling uh, this battery, I actually did drop a screw back there, and thankfully I had a magnet. Um, and After you got the... Um, uh, the balance lead bars assembled, you can go ahead and set those to the side, and then you need to pull out the bus bars and get started with the actual um, battery assembly where we're going to connect these bus bars in between batteries. And the first step there is to go ahead and peel off this uh, blue coating that they put on there, and that blue coating is to protect the aluminum, but you need to make sure you get it pulled off all the way off on all the bus bars first. first. Um, and once you get that peeled off, you're going to start with in what's in this video in the, in the bottom right. Um, because those two center posts uh, towards the right of the screen, those two center posts are your main negative and your main, main positive. And so you're just going to start with that very bottom right hand uh, positive and, and work your way up and around. And once you've got all the bus bars laid out, um, you can go ahead and put on your... Um, balance rails and once the balance rails are assembled and screwed down then you're going to connect all the wires and those wires uh, you do want to look in the manual just to confirm um, you can see in the video pretty clearly uh, how they get connected but I would encourage you to go ahead and look in the manual to make sure that you're doing it correctly and those um, those balance leads uh, once they are properly connected then you are going to hand tighten on and this is a, just the process i like to use i like to hand tighten on each nut um, i tighten all those down and then i align my cables because when you're tightening the nuts down it will have a tendency to turn the cable and you don't want that balance lead uh, to be pulling on the the bus bar you you want that uh, balance lead from from the bus bar to the actual circuit board you want that to have at least a little bit of play and be a little bit loose so it's not pulling on that printed circuit board because you don't want to pull the balance leads off and when you're using a torque wrench or any kind of wrench um, it is definitely possible to turn it the wrong way and and pull that wire a little bit too tight so I like to get them all finger tight. And then once they are all finger tight, I do use a torque wrench. I have this torque wrench set to 7 nanometers. Um, that may be a little bit tight, but I don't really want these to come off. Um, and then once I get all of these things torqued down, um, I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite in there. And this specific version of Loctite is actually for electrical components. This, this Loctite uh, model is used uh, after you don't have to put it on before you're actually supposed to put it on after so you put the loctite on um, you let it sit for a couple of minutes and then just dab off the extra with a paper towel or or, or a towel or something um, so you don't have a bunch of extra loctite in there but that loctite will prevent the uh, these nuts from ever coming loose they won't ever come out of there and you know over thousands of heat cycles. I mean, we're supposed to get 7,000 cycles out of these batteries. 
So you can imagine that just a mechanical only connection that over time it may loosen, but if you add this Loctite in, these are laser welded studs, so the stud is welded in, and then once the Loctite has set up, um, that nut is never coming off of there, and you will never have to worry about that. So after you get all these uh, nuts torqued down, you can go ahead and move on to the next step. In the second to last step here, we're going to go ahead and get our, uh, our board all wired up and the uh, the BMS um, and, the, and the cables that connect to the BMS, they are color-coded. Um, there is only one black connector, and that black connector goes on to the BMS uh, board that is black. Um, you really kind of can't make any mistakes here. The cables are only long enough to reach, uh, they're only long enough to reach, you know, one side of the, uh, the case. They, you know, the short one can't go uh, to the other side. It doesn't reach. So just make sure that you connect that black terminal to the black uh, connector on the BMS board. And then once you do that, um, you can uh, start making your way into, into getting this stuff um, set up so you can attach that front plate. And I like to just put like one or two screws in the front plate. So that way uh, you don't have to hold the, the front plate and, and try to you know uh, wrangle all this stuff at the same time. Uh, you connect up your balance leads, and then you connect up your main positive and your main negative. Um, once that's done, you will uh, connect the final balance leads and torque this whole thing down. And once that is complete, you can go ahead and uh, put the rest of the screws in the front side of your BMS, uh, or your front plate, um, because this battery is, is nearly ready to go. So once you've torqued down the final two nuts on the main negative and the main positive, um, I do like to just test the battery before I put 100% uh, of the screws in it and seal it up. So if you just press that reset button um, on the on the very or the bottom right uh, of the Ethernet ports or the RS-485 ports, you can turn the BMS on and then sort through the menus to look at the cell voltages. And you just want to confirm that all the cell voltages look normal. They should be, you know, 3.2 um, somewhere in there. They should have a voltage. Uh, if it's super high or super low, then you know you've got a problem, but as long as they all look nominal, then you should be good to go. This battery case is ready for its first capacity test. Um, the Apexium BMS actually learns, so if you drain this thing all the way down and then charge it back up and then drain it all the way back down, it, it will learn its own capacity. You don't actually have to program anything. And this BMS uh, does have uh, out balancing, so... I didn't top balance any of these batteries because, uh, in my experience, at least with these particular BMS, uh, these, these BMSs, I haven't had to, uh, they pull full capacity right out of the box. I didn't do anything special. And with the light of a load as solar puts on this system, um, these batteries will eventually top balance themselves. And even if you did go through the process of top balancing, it is likely that they would just come out of top balance and the BMS would end up doing the work anyways. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. And uh, if you want the contact information for Jenny over at Ducon, uh, I will leave that in the description so you can uh, get a hold of her if you're interested in these batteries. Again, I don't have any affiliation. Uh, I'm just trying to make everybody's life uh, cheaper and easier. Thanks for coming to watch.